is that mistrust on both sides. Our officers uh, don't feel like they have community support and our community don't feel like the officers have compassion. Retired LMPD officer Ray Barker is calling on his neighbors and the Louisville Metro Police Department to work together to find the people responsible for the city's second mass shooting in less than a week. Two people were killed and four others injured Saturday when someone opened fire into a large crowd at Chickasaw Park. Now this morning we've learned the names of the victims in the shooting. Jim is joining us in the studio with the details. Jim, good morning. Well, good morning, Haley and Eric. The Jefferson County Coroner released those names of the two victims who died in that second mass shooting over the weekend. We know that at least one, we know that one of them was a 17 year old. That victim is David Huff. The other victim, 28 year old Diaji Goodman. Now we've learned that one of the four people sent to the hospital has been released. The other three so far are being listed in fair condition. Right now, nobody is in critical condition. Now Chickasaw Park was filled with hundreds of people when those shots were fired on Saturday, according to Louisville Metro Police. Now in the past week, we have heard many calls for unity and for a path forward. Monday, we spoke with Ray Barker, a retired Louisville Metro Police officer. He offered his thoughts on some of the solutions, including implementing concealed carry permits, which are now not required in Kentucky. He says that requiring a permit could keep some guns out of irresponsible hands. You even have to have a license to sell eggs. Because the license requires you to learn safety about that gun. It requires you to learn functionality about that gun. A spokesperson for Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg said that they are aware of some of the calls for concealed carry permits and will be bringing those up during conversations that they're having with state lawmakers. Now, the mayor's office has said it'll be exploring some more immediate solutions for Chickasaw Park and some of the other parks throughout the city in the wake of this shooting. I'll be back in the next half hour with some more details on those. Eric, hit. All right, Jim, thanks so much. Louisville Metro Police released a statement saying 14 homicides in one week should cause all of us to be outraged, adding that they are pursuing all available leads. Of course, they issued this statement before this morning when Louisville notched its 15th in one week. The statement says, quote, we are asking for everyone's assistance to come together, work with us, and help take back our city. Victims and their families deserve justice, and community members deserve to live in peace without fear of becoming a victim of violent crime. We have an update for you this morning on the condition of 26-year-old Metro Police Officer Nicholas Wilt. One week ago, he, along with his training officer, Corey Galloway, raced toward the gunfire at the Old National Bank branch. Wilt was shot in his head. The LNPD said he is still in critical condition, but is now stable. The department said his family sees and feels all of the love during this difficult time. We'll also mention Churchill Downs told us it's discussing ideas to honor the mass shooting survivors and victims at the Kentucky Derby this year. But as of this morning, nothing has been finalized. And the final victim of that mass shooting will be laid to rest later this week. Services for Juliana Farmer are planned in her hometown of Henderson, Kentucky. Visitation will be at Tomlinson Funeral Home on Friday from 4 until 8. The funeral will be the following day at Paul's Episcopal Church. That's going to happen at 11 a.m. For those of you wanting to help our family, we do have a link to their GoFundMe page. That's at whas11.com. Discussions about gun reform are being brought back to Frankfurt. Standing in solidarity with Tennessee lawmakers who were expelled after pushing for gun reform, Kentucky's Black Legislative Caucus says it's their responsibility to pass gun laws to make families safe. One thing they're pushing for is a red flag law to remove guns from people considered dangerous or prevent them from buying one in the first place. Legislators say evaluating factors like mental health could prevent gun violence. Republican Representative Jason Nemes of Middletown says red flag laws can help, but they must be carefully crafted. I mean, there's going to be a tension, but I think at the same time we can do a better job of addressing underlying concerns and um, making sure that we don't allow uh, as easy of access to firearms to people who shouldn't have access to them. There are times when we need to step in and stop someone before they harm themselves or, for, or harm others. These laws have shown their worth in other states, and I believe the Commonwealth of Kentucky should have one as well. Standing in the audience yesterday was a grandmother from Scott County, Kentucky, who held a sign calling for red flag laws and background checks. 
She told us her grandchildren are sometimes scared to go to school because of guns. It really is a wake up call for us. Our job as adults are to make sure our children are safe. They're not safe in Kentucky right now. Lawmakers tell us they're hopeful some bipartisan piece of legislation will pass in the near future. New this morning, U.S. Customs and Border Protection made a massive fake cash discovery in Chicago. Take a look at this. Agents stopped a package last Friday that contained 22,000 fake $100 bills. That is $2.2 million in counterfeit cash. The fake bills were headed to an address somewhere in Fort Wayne, Indiana.